ever found yourself at a loss for words? Not to worry, Merriam-Webster is here to help. The company was founded in 1831, but has found ways to stay relevant. Its full dictionary is available free online. It receives about 100 million views every month, and the company constantly tracks what's trending. The Merriam-Webster Twitter account has also gained a strong following. It has become known for calling out prominent people when they use words incorrectly. Last week, the dictionary slammed United Airlines over its violent removal of a passenger. It tweeted the definition of volunteer as someone who does something without being forced. Peter Sokolowski is Merriam-Webster's editor-at-large. Welcome. Thank you so much. So, uh, online, how much, how much online traffic do you get? And is that where people are now going to their dictionary? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the dictionary is still in print. It's also an app, a very popular app, and it's online. So there's three different ways to look up a word, and I use probably all three every day. A lot of people do. And by the way, print is alive and well. It's still profitable. It's just a smaller part of our business. Yeah, 100 million page views per month. Yeah. But you've also used Twitter in a way to engage people in the discussion sure. about what words really mean. Absolutely. And we're, I think we're having a national conversation about language right now, and the dictionary plays a part in that conversation. People turn to us very naturally when a public figure uses language in a remarkable way. So, for example, with like, volunteer, uh, that was a statement from United that we were, uh, that we could, re could report upon. We're reporting the data from that 100 million page views a month. We could see that the word volunteer had spiked to the top. And so that we know what the people are curious about by virtue of what they're looking up online. And that's the big story here. I think the background is that the dictionary online in 1996 um, uh, was the first time we could see what people were actually curious about. So the provocation of curiosity is really what we're reporting But on. Peter, that's why your website is being called sassy. <laughs> because you use the word volunteer on the day that that United story sure. was just dominating the headlines. Sure. And you're saying, but we're not driving that. It's the public that's, that's driving right. it. We're reporting the, the truth about words. Yeah. And that's sort of what we've always did, done with the definitions, well, now we can do it with the data. For instance, the word of the day. You have a word of the day on March 24th. That's the day Republican leaders gathered to discuss repealing Obamacare. Your word of the day was nightmare. Yeah, and I have to say there's no editorializing at all. Because How those, is that not editorializing? Because those words were chosen probably 60 days before. Really? <laughs> and I know because I voiced the podcast for word of the day, and I do it usually a week or two in advance. So the fact is... That was a coinky thing. That's totally? a coincidence. It's a total coincidence. And here's the thing. I mean, why is it now that just copying and pasting the definition of a word like feminism, like uh -huh. fact, like complicit. Uh -huh. uh, why is that viewed as a subversive act? That's the bigger question. Well, when Kellyanne Conway said that she didn't identify as a feminist because right. it's associated with, in her words, as being anti-male and prohibition, Miriam Webster pointed to the definition of feminism and said this, the belief that men and women should have equal rights and opportunities. So what's the goal? Well, that's the definition. Pointing <laughs> so the fact is, that was a great example of an instance where a public figure raised the question of meaning. You know, yeah. uh, the president said, but it said military, he didn't mean military. He said wiretapping, he didn't mean wiretapping. But you didn't um, have to point that out. Uh, no, but we, but we did. Oh, well, that's right. But, yeah. but we did see in the data that people were checking. I see. People were checking. They looked up feminism. And in that case, as it with, for example, complicit, mm -hmm. um, the, again, the, the, the question of meaning was raised. Mm -hmm. and, and so where do you go? Uh, you know, the dictionary has a kind of unique authority uh, and to call balls and strikes on spelling and meaning. Got oh, it. because Gail had asked Ivanka Trump about That's being right. complicit, That's which right. was that Saturday Night Live skit. Yeah, so it spiked twice, once after the sketch mm -hmm. and once after your interview. The, the, you also introduced new words online. This year you did throw shade. I love that phrase. <laughs> First world problem. How do you describe what you're going to put in? Well, How do you that, describe your new words? The new words that are added, we just added a thousand new words about a month ago. That's an old story. I mean, that's still the same slow process of lexicography. The job of a dictionary maker is revision. You know, we have to make sure that the changing language is reflected in, in the pages. Give us an example of it. Go ahead. Of, of the dictionary. So there are three criteria. We have, uh, you know, widespread use of a word so that a lot of people use it in different publications. Uh, long-term use, mm -hmm. and that is that there's evidence of the word being used in a consistent, sustained way, and finally meaningful use, that most of the people who use the word kind of mean the same thing when okay. they use it, and what, that's when we can write it. So what's definition. an example of a new word that's been added? Well, we just added a whole bunch, but I mean, net neutrality, for example. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Those are that's two words, word, you know, when, we have, word. when we have compounds like that um, at, that are not self-explanatory, we have to add them as, as a single entry. Binge watch. 
Ah. Another example, yeah. photobomb, you know, great this to, kind of thing. Uh -huh. yeah. Great to have you, Peter. It's great to be here. Yeah. Bye, Mr. Sassy. You like being called <laughs> sassy? As long as we're sassy and also uh, substantial. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Please post sassy to Twitter for a yes. definition. Sassy and substantial. Thank you, Peter. I like it. Yeah.